वेलकम डियर फ्रेंड्स टू माई चैनल जियो टेक्निकल इंजीनियरिंग कंसल्टेंसी टिप्स टूडे इन कंटिन्यूएशन टू माई प्रीवियस लेक्चर ऑफ लिक्यूफैक्शन वेन आई एक्सप्लेन इट्स मैकेनिज्म एट्सेट्रा टू यू इन इन कंटिन्यूएशन विद दैट आई विल नाउ बी टेलिंग यू ऑल अबाउट द फैक्टर्स एफेक्टिंग लिक्यूफैक्शन दैट इज the characteristic properties of soils because of which liquefaction occur then i will discuss about you with you about the three types of ground failures its detrimental effects on civil engineering structures how the soil phase how many kinds probable kinds it may be and the locations prone to liquefaction now coming over to my first slide after the introduction page factors affecting liquefaction soil type generally occurs in loose clean to silty sands preferably in completely submerged soils as a result of earthquake ground motions that is unsaturated soils are not usually subject to liquefaction because the volume compression in these kind of soils does not generate excess pore pressures in them second is the particle size and gradation rounded soil particles of sand of uniform size and gradation are the most susceptible to liquefaction while well graded sands with angular grain shapes are less prone to liquefy because of a more stable interlocking of the soil grains the third factor is the water level soils under water up to a depth of 15 meter below ground level are more vulnerable are more vulnerable to being liquefied the things mentioned in red indicate about the factors on which liquefaction occurs However, liquefaction potential can be reduced by lowering the groundwater level or by providing means of relieving the excess pore water pressures that may develop during an earthquake. However, आज तक जो मैंने कुछ studies करी हुई हैं liquefaction potential निकालने की based on standard prediction test values, उसमें I have found कि soils up to a depth of 18-20 meter or so you can find the soils to be more susceptible ya susceptible to liquefaction because as we go downwards and the overburden increases the chances of liquefaction occurring reduces although in some cases of uh, liquefaction being done by me in past case studies in the state of bihar of uttar pradesh i have found out in the ganga alluvial bed the soils getting liquefied up to a depth of say 25 meter or so below the natural ground level <coughs> now fourth point is permeability the soils with large non plastic fines content are susceptible to liquefaction as they inhibit drainage of excess pore water pressures and in order ki wahan liquefaction na kar kare aapke soil mein aisi property honi chahiye कि ड्रेनेज ऑफ एक्सेस पोर प्रेशर इजिली हो जाए तो दैट इज द लिक्यूफैक्शन वलनरेबिलिटी ऑफ अ सॉइल डिपॉजिट ऑल्सो डिपेंड्स ऑन द परमेबिलिटी ऑफ द सराउंडिंग सॉइल एज वेल लेस परवियस प्ले सॉइल्स प्रिवेंट रैपिड डिसिपेशन ऑफ एक्सेस पोर प्रेशर्स ऑन द अदर हैंड सफिशेंट ड्रेनेज इफ यू फाइंड सर्टेन सॉइल कंडीशन इन विच सफिशेंट ड्रेनेज अब बिलो अ सेचुरेटेड डिपॉजिट इज देयर it can prevent accumulation of pore pressures and hence in turn it can avoid liquefaction occurring at that very particular site <laughs> gravity soils because of their uh, um, large sizes and uh, arrangement between them because of their high permeability are less prone to being liquefied unless pore water drainage is impeded by less pervious adjoining deposits pore pressure in in loose sand the fifth point is pore pressure in loose sand pore pressures build up rapidly and the soil may lose its initial shear resistance in dense soils 
the pore pressure builds up at a slower rate and hence this kind of soil can retain much of its resistance to shear. Ground acceleration, more the ground acceleration, more will be the liquefaction potential. Confining pressure, the frictional resistance between soil grains is proportional to the effective confining stress. <laughs> So consequently, the liquefaction resistance of a soil deposit increases with depth as the effective overburden pressure increases, which I have just now explained you in my previous slide in reference to the water table level. Now, <laughs> classification of ground failures. Sir T. L. Yaud has classified ground failures due to liquefaction into three broad groups, namely lateral spreads. Now, what is lateral spreads? It is the movement of surface soil layers in a lateral direction due to loss of shear strength in subsurface layers because of liquefaction. Lateral spreads develop on very gentle slopes of less than 3%. Observed damage due to this is extremely disruptive in an indirect manner. The example given in red indicates 1906 San Francisco earthquake where this kind of failure resulted in even the water supply pipelines being disrupted for proper supply. <laughs> now the second is the flow failures. These flows occur when large zones of soil become liquefied or blocks of unliquefied soils flow over a large layer of liquefied soils. These flows develop on slopes greater than 5%, this displaces great volumes of soil for tens of meters or more often at high velocities, thus resulting in the disruption and destruction of the nearby structures coming in their way. Example is the 1964 Alaska earthquake flow failures. <laughs> now the third is the loss of bearing capacity. What happens in this very case? This failure occurs as a result of soil beneath the structure liquefying in turn causing large soil deformations. Structures supported on soils such soils settle, tilt over turn or even rise out, of the, or rise out of the ground which I have discussed with you a picture image of Nigata earthquake in my previous lecture. The same is the example here being referred to in red line Nigata earthquake where apartment buildings tipped by as much as 60 to 80 degrees. Now the effects on civil engineering structures. Buildings whose foundations bear directly on sand which liquefies experience a sudden loss of support resulting in irregular differential settlement of the building causing structural damage by way of cracking of foundations. Where a thin crust of non-liquefied soil exists between building foundation and a liquefied soil, soil in case it may be, in case if such is the case, a punching shear type of foundation failure occurs. Second is the irregular settlements of ground break underground utility lines which I have discussed with the image of Canterbury, New Zealand earthquake failure in my previous lecture. The third one is the upward pressure applied by the movement of liquefied soil through the crust layer which results in crack, cracking weak foundation slabs and enter buildings through the service ducts and allows water to damage the building contents and electrical services. A case example, a picture of this referred to for the tsunami earthquake in Kerala, a picture was being referred to in my previous lecture. Now the bridges and large buildings constructed on pile foundations often lose support from the adjacent soils and buckle and come to rest at a tilt after shaking. What happens? It is the interface of the liquefying and the non-liquefying soil layer where the deep pile foundations buckle due to lateral spreads occurring beneath the soil. In this very case, I had referred to in my previous lecture for a bridge failure, multi-span bridge failure of Japan. Now, the sloping ground and ground next to rivers and lake sites on a liquefied soil layer, which is usually termed as lat lateral spreading, opening large cracks or fissures in the ground and cause significant damage to buildings, bridges, roads and services such as water, 
natural gas sewerage power and telecommunications installed in the affected ground now the buried tanks and manholes float in the liquefied soil due to buoyancy <laughs> now the last one earth embankments such as flood levees and earth dams and mine waste tailing dams lose stability and collapse if the material comprising the embankment or its foundation liquefies due to flow failures in coastal areas flow failures under water carry away large sections of port facilities i had uh, referred to a picture of loma prieta earthquake in my previous lecture with reference to this okay next now to conclude this lecture of mine we can say that these following kind of type of liquefaction failures generally occur sand boils and quick condition failures lateral spreads and flow failures soil liquefaction below a structure resulting in loss of bearing capacity due to which a structure supported settled tilt or overturn or even sometimes rise out of the ground just like as in the case of nigata earthquake japan 1964 buried structures lighter in weight then the surrounding soil float up to the surface leading to unexpected emerging of buried tanks liquefaction induced uneven settlements of ground leading to damage of roads railway tracks and other structures there are too many example cases of this in the past which have occurred due to liquefaction induced earth, due to earth, uh, sorry rather to say liquefaction induced earthquake failures there are empty number of cases uh, for such kind of failures now failure of retaining was as a result of increase in lateral loads from liquefied backfill soil and also due to the loss of support from liquefied foundation soils now lateral flows causing long tears and rips in the ground surface just like in the case of bhuj earthquake and of the recent past nepal earthquake mein aisa hua tha ki ripping apart ho gayi thi ground ki now the loss of lateral support causing failure of pile foundations due to buckling as a result of loss of support from the adjacent soil there are many such cases of pile foundation failures of the bridges where the bridges were built on pile foundations and they failed because of the lateral spreads which ultimately occurred in the surrounding shaft region of the pile foundations thus what actually occurred there was a major loss of skin friction and the pile behaved as if they could not they could not take the desired live loads etc of the super uh, live loads and other loads of the super structure because of the reduction in the actual load carrying capacity of the piles because why its end component bearing its end bearing component was working but it's lost in the shaft resistance that is why the pile foundations failed now the locations prone to liquefaction there are basically it can be uh, referred to as in three parts liquefaction in general affects the structures in low lying areas near bodies of water such as rivers lakes bays and oceans port and wharf facilities are often located in areas susceptible to liquefaction and many have been damaged by liquefaction in past earthquakes most ports and wharves have major retaining structures or quay walls to allow large ships to moor adjacent to flat cargo handling areas when the soil behind and or beneath such a wall liquefies the pressure it exerts on the wall increase greatly enough to cause the wall of slide and or tilt towards the water i have referred to a picture of port failure of a new zealand earthquake in my previous lecture which refers to this very point now the last one in this very case is liquefaction also frequently causes damages to bridges that cross rivers and or other bodies of water such damage have drastic consequences impeding emergency response and rescue operations in the short term and causing significant economic loss from business disruption in the long term so what i would like to say is we all as engineers should work towards reducing such kind of catastrophes although it is not practically possible but we should find some ways out for designing the structures such that 
वी आर एबल टू रिड्यूज द डैमेज टू द स्ट्रक्चर्स एंड सेव द लॉसेज इन गर्ड हैंड्स फॉर बिकॉज ऑफ एनी सच नेचुरल कैलामिटीज नाउ नमस्कार एंड थैंक यू होप यू वुड हैव लव दिस लेक्चर ऑफ माइंड कीप ऑन सब्सक्राइबिंग टू माई चैनल एंड आई विड आई विल जस्ट शो एनदर साइड फॉर यू ऑल इन विच यू कैन फाइंड माई लिंकड इन माई लिंकड इन कनेक्ट आई डी यू आर एल वॉट यू से एंड यू कैन वॉच माई वीडियोज ऑन दिस कॉरेस्पॉन्डिंग यूट्यूब चैनल एड्रेस ऑफ माइंड एज वेल इफ देर आर एनी सजेशन एंड यू विश की आई शुड प्रिपेयर अ लेक्चर ऑन विच वेरी सब्जेक्ट यू कैन कॉन्टेक्ट मी एंड ड्रॉप me drop your ideas with me at my these two mail ids anurakapu16 at the rate gmail dot com and or anurakapu16 at the rate yahoo dot co dot in and feel free to push and put your comments in my youtube channel for any further considerations of yours thank you thank you very much